Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look at this example. We're supposed to integrate 1 over x squared plus x from 1 to infinity. The question is, is it convergent? And if it is, what is the limit? So when we take the integrand right here, 1 over x squared plus x, and compare that to 1 over x, we can see that this is indeed smaller than that for all x is greater than 1, which means that it's probably convergent. All right, next, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and use hmm, partial fractions, I think. That would be a good way to try and integrate this. So let's see here. We can take 1 over x times x plus 1 and write it as a over x plus b over x plus 1. And all we have to do is find a and b so that we can integrate Hmm. What we can do is we can multiply both sides by the quantity x times x plus 1. When we do, the left side becomes 1. And on the right side, when the x cancels out, you have a times x plus 1. And when the x plus 1 cancels out, we have plus b times x. Which means that we have 0 is equal to a plus b times x or I should say 0x, I'll put an x in here, so 0x is equal to a plus b times x, and 1 is equal to a. So from that, we can determine that, of course, a is equal to 1, and since a plus b is equal to 0, and a is equal to 1, we have 1 plus b equals 0, or b equals negative 1. So now we know what the two fractions are, which means that this integral can be rewritten as an integral from 1 to infinity of, uh, let's see, a, which is 1, 1 over x dx, plus the integral from 1 to infinity of negative 1 over x plus 1 dx. Now, at first glimpse, you look at this and go, wow, wait a minute, I know this integral. This does not converge, so therefore I am done. But not so quick, because we have a negative sign here, and we have 1 over x plus 1. So maybe the portions that diverge will cancel out. That's the suspicion here. So let's take a look. Let's go ahead and integrate this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as t approaches 1 of the integral from t to infinity of 1 over x dx, and I'll put a bracket there, and then minus the integral from t to infinity of 1 over x plus 1 dx. So let's go ahead and try to evaluate that and see what we get. So this is equal to the limit as t goes to 1 of, when we integrate the first one, we get the natural log of x, evaluate it from t to infinity, and then we have minus the natural log, and I should put absolute value signs around that, and the natural log of x plus 1 evaluated from t to infinity. Okay, let's plug in the limits and see what we get. So we get the limit as t goes to 1 of, so first we plug in the upper limit here, we get the natural log of infinity, the natural log of infinity minus the natural log of t minus the natural log of infinity plus 1 of infinity plus 1 minus, plug in the lower limit, the natural log of t plus 1, the natural log of t plus 1. Like that, and I should put big brackets around it like that. Okay, now notice we have the natural log of infinity minus the natural log of infinity plus 1. So that means that these two cancel each other out. We get rid of that and then what we have left is the natural log of uh, minus the natural log of t and plus the natural log of t plus 1. So this means that when I let t go to 1 I get the following. I have minus the natural log of 1, and the minus times the minus would be plus the natural log of 2. 
And of course, the natural log of 1, that will be equal to 0. So this becomes the natural log of 2, which is the ultimate answer of our initial integral. So our initial suspicion was using the comparison test, yes, it should converge. But then we saw something suspicious. Then we realized that this normally doesn't converge, but then we subtract from that this function, which also doesn't converge. So when we continue with that and we evaluate the function after the integral, after we put the limits in, we notice we have the natural log of infinity minus the natural log of infinity plus 1. So this will negate this because for every value of x as you reach infinity, this will always be larger than this by a very tiny amount. And so therefore, when we eliminate that, what we have left is simply minus the natural log of 1 plus the natural log of 2. And so the result is the natural log of 2. And that's how it's done.